manifestation of the hand of God it can reveal to them the might and the power of God then it also reveals to them the states of their hearts it was by the miracle that happened to Peter Peter was fishing and he did not catch anything and Jesus said little children have you any catch he said cast your net to the right side when he caught so much fish he looked at Jesus and said depart from me I am a sinner something about that miracle revealed to him the state of his heart hallelujah when the miraculous happens without Jesus being at the center of it let me tell you what happens people enjoy the miracles they receive the manifestations of the power of God but most times their attention will just end on the man who was used by God to perform the miracle and they forget about Jesus and they never live with a functional relationship with Jesus Christ I have shared with you my passion and this is our passion in this ministry that in everything and through everything that is done the entire goal is to use it as a means to cause men to believe in that name the name of Jesus the one exalted as Lord and Christ if we lose that then no matter what happens no matter how powerful and how great it is it will be very small as far as impact is concerned from the standpoint of heaven God's measure of impact is the degree to which that activity revealed Jesus not just to the degree to which the activity blessed men blessing men is secondary the degree to which whatever activity reveals Jesus and glorifies him is how impactful that activity was as far as the realm of the spirit is concerned and then of course the degree to which it transformed and blessed people so the miracle service is really no miracle service except and unless it is able to connect people to Jesus Christ the son of the living God let me show you two scriptures and then I'll begin to minister proper mark chapter 3 we'll start reading from verse 13 mark 3 13 mark chapter 3 from verse 13 the Bible says and he goeth up into a mountain the he being Jesus and called unto him whom he would and they came unto him verse 14 he says and he ordained 12 to what end number one that they should be with him then and they and that he might send them forth to preach the first assignment is the relationship he didn't just call them to be preachers he called them to be with him to build a functional relationship with him and then they should go forth and preach verse 15 the last verse now it says and to have power to heal sicknesses and to cast out devils all because they were with him are we together now desiring the miraculous desiring the manifestation of the power of God in isolation to that desire to know Jesus will lead men to catastrophe you will receive the miracles but it will not profit you because the presence of the person that immunes you permanently from that attack and that onslaught of darkness is not there so whatever you receive through the prophetic or through whatever vessel God uses will always be temporary you see when you go to a herbalist a native doctor a spiritist a diviner he's not interested in a relationship with you all he wants you don't even need to know his name except if the spirit asks him to ask you the name otherwise you can just go and say look I'm looking for power to get wealth or power to do this and that and he tells you he will bring the list go and provide this once you provide it he does it he gives you whatever you have to collect and you leave you don't need to know his name he doesn't need to know your name in fact you may not even know where you went to because usually it's wicked people that take others there so it's possible that you don't even know the place you just know that you were driving in thick darkness until you got somewhere so Satan is not interested in, in a relationship he's interested in oppression he does not lead people through relationships he leads people through fear 
are we together now but when you come to jesus more than just giving you things he wants to build that relationship with you and then on the strength of that relationship he can now release you to first be the number one beneficiary of that relationship through the manifestation of his hand on your life then from the standpoint of that conviction you can now reach others this is how it works when he met moses he was not just interested in sending moses to pharaoh he had that relationship with moses a deeper relationship moses said who shall i tell pharaoh has sent me and he said i am that i am go and tell pharaoh i am had sent you are we together in acts chapter 4 acts chapter 4 we'll start reading from verse 8 acts chapter 4 and verse 8 this was this was peter in defense he was he was defending the miracle that just happened to the man at gate beautiful before the elders and the council he said peter filled with the holy ghost said unto them ye rulers of the people and elders of israel if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the important man and by what means he is made whole next verse be it known unto you all peter now and to all the people of israel that by the name of jesus christ of nazareth whom ye crucified whom god raised from the dead even by him doth this man stand here before you all that means peter was saying the miracle is not the most important thing the miracle is a signpost leading you to the person you crucified so he performs the miracle to remind you that you once crucified him but now he's alive and he can reach out to you next verse he says this is the stone which was set at naught, you know, you builders, and has become the chief of the corner. We're reading verse 12. He said, neither is there salvation in any other. Look at how one miracle gives him an opportunity to preach a sound sermon. Are you seeing that now? So that it was not just the miracle. The miracle was the basis to now introduce Jesus. Neither is there salvation in any other now if he did not perform the miracle and he said neither is there salvation they would charge him of blasphemy but now his result was standing before him while he would preach so even though they didn't want to agree with him they could not deny what salvation had come to that man neither is there salvation in any other for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved 13 it says now when they saw the boldness of peter and john and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men they marveled why they took knowledge of them that they had been with jesus the basis of their exploits they had been with jesus not that they had listened to jesus not that they had received impartation from jesus they had been with jesus the presence and the relationship factor was what was responsible for that marvel every time we are used by god to heal the sick to cast out devils to bring all kinds of mighty manifestations of god's power listen carefully over the lives of people and over territories it is to this end that means if you just stop at celebrating the miracle you rob god of an opportunity to be introduced to men the miracles are the evidences you need to stand before you while you remind the world that there is a name and there is only one who is worthy of their allegiance their loyalty one who has given his life for them your gospel is not complete if all you do is celebrate miracles the miracles are signs a sign points that there is something greater than itself if you want to go say to a babin saloon and you're looking for it and then they tell you there's xyz saloon here the sign leads you there 
if you stand before the sign and you keep admiring the sign and say what beautiful um, um, what beautiful signpost this is wonderful you're not it, it will not profit you it's not the sign that will give you a haircut the sign only directs you is that true It is good to celebrate miracles. It is good to celebrate signs and wonders, the manifestations of the hand of God. But I remind you again, I remind you again, I remind you again, that at the center of it all, it's you that I see. It's you that I see. Not Joshua Selman. At the center of it all, it's you that I see. It's you that I see. Let me tell you a secret. This is one of the reasons why many people, respectfully, even we men and women of God, we do not see the power of God in ever increasing dimension. Because we are ashamed of getting out of the way. To let people see Jesus projected through our lives we feel very embarrassed if we have to move out of the way because we feel as though God is cheating or scamming us now is my opportunity to shine I need to stand before that miracle so that I receive an attestation that it was through me it happened but those who love Jesus say it's not necessary the most important thing is to verify if Jesus will be lifted through that process are you getting it now Learn this as a principle. Every time I pray for the miracle service or any other service for that matter, believe me, my prayer as always is, Lord, walk wonders in the midst of your people. But whilst you are doing that, as they look at me, may they see you. I've told you, you are not yielded when your presence reminds people of you. Your presence must remind people of Jesus. That's how you know you are yielded. That means when they look at you strangely, the more they see you, the more they forget about you. And another image is what is built in their hearts. So they look at you for five minutes and they nod their head and say, Jesus, you are mighty. Are we together? Yes. Is the reason why there is a lot of confusion as to who performed the miracle because for a long time we kept silencing jesus in the equation and we kept projecting ourselves so now the people know preacher a preacher b preacher c and there's nothing wrong with that except that in magnifying ourselves we shut jesus out of the program so many of the people who were healed when they came back they did not find us and we did not leave jesus with them so they we became their idols because we're supposed to present Jesus so that even when we are not there he'll be there with them because he's the friend that stick it closer than a brother are we together yes tonight you have come because the Lord brought you here by his spirit to bless you to lift you I believe in the whole counsel of God and when we spend time learning the ways of God like we do week in, week out, there must be moments in every meeting where we dedicate that time to allow Jesus come in the midst of his people to take burdens away, to open up doors. You will never truly be able to serve God acceptably, living a defeated life by Satan. There must be an evidence to your gospel. There must be an evidence to your gospel so miracle services are designed to give that opportunity that God will step in and help his people and and all of a sudden you see people come to testify the mighty hand of God in a moment in a twinkling of an eye an age-long captivity just like that I've been involved in the miracle ministry for a while and the ministry of signs and wonders and i can tell you sincerely you will think that after many years of seeing these things you should get used to it you know like a professional a, a consultant or 
you know, an architect or someone who has been in the thing for a long time. But for every time, every time, I marvel at the wonder-working power of Jesus. When I see people coming here just because a man spoke, when I see people's lives just open like that, like a book that was closed, and now it's open. When I see people receiving these things, it, it, that is a message to me as the preacher. The wonder-working God. Look what he's able to do. That from one point you can stand as representing him, and you are speaking to nations and territories, and the spirit of the living God, who is not bounded by time and distance, going to the lives of people and correcting all kinds of things, and somebody will leave and say, I can't find that pain again. The pain did not go. It was driven. You think the pain wants to go? No. I can't find that captivity again. By Monday morning, someone is ringing your phone. Where are you? I'm here. Please come. What for? You just come. Aha. Uh -huh. And you get into a place of prepared blessings and you sit down and ask yourself what am i doing here what am i doing here what am i doing here then he reminds you do not lose this opportunity to project jesus when you return back and tell people look what jesus has done usually they will clap for you and say things like you are lucky or your man of god is powerful or where did you go to get the miracle after telling them all those things Tell them, hold on, we are not done. If I just stop here with you celebrating the miracle, I wasted an opportunity. Because all of this thing is supposed to bring glory to the name of Jesus. And you would join them to worship Jesus and say, Jesus, thank you. This has happened so that men will know that you are still in the business of making. You are still in the business of lifting. You are still in the business of changing. And let me tell you what happens. God will look at you and say, wow, because of this that has happened right now, someone who was not serious will say, so what do I do now? And you can give him one message to listen to. And heaven is clapping for you. You did not waste that miracle. You are ready for another one. Because this, your evangelism is effective. One open door. Now three people are coming to Jesus. You will leave that office and someone is saying, Lord, I think I need to be serious with you. I'm tired of this kind of thing. And he tells you, get ready for another one. Someone is calling you and you come and see him hold a key and say, God said I should give you the key to this house. House? Sorry, this is my name. He said exactly that. House? Please don't embarrass me. If you are a scammer, I can leave you to go in peace. It is yours. And you stand before that house and raise a song until everybody is gathered there. And they say, what are you singing for? Ah, and with our hands lifted up, we will worship our King. And with our hands lifted up, we come before you rejoicing. With our hands lifted up to the sky and the world wonders why. We just tell them we love in our King. Oh, we just tell them we love in our King. Look at me. If you are a business owner, we're about to pray. If you are a business owner and someone comes to you and you give him your product and say, I'm giving you this product, just, just, for visiting me and in three hours he returns with ten clients and he said what for and they say I, I there is something this man presented your product in a way that we need to see who made this will you throw that person away will you allow them kill that person hmm. and then the person says can you give me the privilege and you say how much will I pay you and he said no 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 I don't need payment it's an honor for me to be able to market this five hours later you bring in 50 people there will be a board meeting on your case immediately and say although this guy does not seem like he's employed there is something about his tenacity a whole city 
comes to know that product and to love that business and the owner because of your influence do you know what will happen they will make you something called a brand ambassador are we together Who, a brand ambassador means that you have you have the level of influence to compel people to pay attention no matter what they invest in you they don't see it as a loss because it's nothing compared to what comes to them on account of your presence so when god tests you with a little anointing a little breakthrough one open door here and there one contract of five hundred thousand, and you don't he does not see you again you hear tight you say god forbid <laughs> okay at least bless other people no 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 kingdom advancement nothing you run away and then when it's over you come and say god are you not merciful he says i'm merciful but you are not productive i won't drive you but i will watch you love is not conditional but trust is conditional both the man he gave five talents two talents and one talent he loved all of them but he did not trust all of them can i tell you this i have learned from scripture by the privilege of god's grace through my life i give you a great secret get out of the way and let jesus be seen through your life it is truly the secret of rest in getting out of the way you will find out that everywhere you move to men will move there too because there is something about the efficiency of your witness so all the miracles that happen in this house the miracles that have happened and the many more that will be happening shortly may i remind you dear people of god and the nations of the earth that this is not just about joshua selman thank god for the privilege of ministry the privilege of partnership with the holy spirit but i'm drumming it to you again that more than this man standing there is one who is high and lifted up and that for everything you see happen here see it as a message a message if you come to me i can pray for you i can bless you but if you go to him he will give you life everlasting the highest i can show you is compassion but when you go to him he says and i if i be lifted up from the earth i will draw all men to myself this appetite for fame this appetite to want to be the face behind the manifestation of everything i want to be the one listen we will keep punishing ourselves forever and ever and not get anything be lifted high be lifted high oh lord be lifted high for you are holy oh lord be lifted high Every Everything God does in your life listen to me and everything God does through you must directly project Jesus oh you are a kingdom millionaire and you just sit down and say well I, I don't want to be proud but I mean this is no don't just say hey, glory to God carelessly be intentional God means many things which one a young man comes to you and says well i am I'm, I'm looking for a business mentor you are a billionaire help me you don't just sit down and start telling him do this buy and sell no listen young man let me tell you this jesus christ is the alpha and omega of my life before we talk business principles i present to you the one who helped me i don't know how he helped my neighbor but this is the one who helped me the person may not want to take you seriously but your evidence is before you are we together if every politician every businessman every man of god every career person every successful person makes a determination 
that your life will reveal and project Jesus. Not in a way of some fanatism that downplays others. No. A sincere declaration of your faith and your conviction. That you love him with all your heart and your life is a testament of what he can do. Believe me. 